Hello, fellow caviar connoisseurs, and welcome to week 26 of Sports Caviar March Madness Edition. Happy to see you. And we're going to get right into it here. The way that we're going to do this, I think, Bajan Byrne, is we're just going to gloss over some early upset picks that we each have. Let's tell our uh, kind of stores who you have for your final four, and we'll go from there. I want to see if any of us get it right. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The best sporting spectacle. We got March Madness is upon us. Baseball is less than eight hours away, right? That's right. Dodgers, Padres in South Korea. Set your alarm clocks, burn out. You got to get up early. Set it. Might as well watch start. See first pitch tomorrow at 6 a.m. And we got golf. Watch the uh, Dodgers lose. Yeah, it'll be good. Oh, burn. No. (laughs) We own the pods. The Dodgers own the pods. It's going to be, it's a great time of year. Let's talk the tournament. Upset specials. I like New Mexico. Give me the Lobos. To go to Sweet 16, I love Jamal Mashburn, Jalen House. Oh, NBA, Jamal Pedigree, Mashburn. Uh, the Monster Mash Part Do, the sequel. They're hot. They can play. I like their matchup. They'll get through Gonzaga. They'll win another. Give me them in the Sweet 16. And they give me Big Beef State. Big Beef State actually to beat Gonzaga. Sorry, I think I had that wrong. But Big Beef State, and they give me New Mexico State. To advance, make these state to the round of 32 in the Mexico stage of the Sweet 16. Final four picks for me. Here's some math for you. 13 straight years. 13 straight years. A final four has contained a four seed or lower. Or four seed or higher, I should say. So a four, five, or six or above. 13 straight years. Eight out of nine of the past eight, nine years. Eight out of nine. A seven plus seed. In the final four. So there will be some at upsets. Don't go all rock chop. Oh, yeah. Off. Definitely don't go with the Jayhawks. My final four. Iowa State Cyclones. Playing great basketball right now. UNC Tar Heels. Just on town alone. Hover pick. Home handler. Gator Nation. There's your seventh seed. Gator Nation in the final four. But losing wow. to the Purdue Boilermakers. Mm. As my other final four team. There it is. Iowa State, UNC, UF, Purdue. You can already throw away the bracket. Burn to you. And then you have uh, your biggest upset. You had McNeese State going Sweet 16. No, McNeese State, round of 32. Mexico, Mexico State, round of 16. Okay, and then Elite Eight, you basically have all double-digit seeds out. I think I've got, let's take a peek here. Obviously, I have the Gators there at a seven. I may have a higher seed. Let's take a quick peek. With 16. My elite eight, just real quick, nobody wants to hear the whole thing. Actually, I take that back. I've got New Mexico going okay. all the way to the elite eight. All the way to nice. elite eight, losing to UNC in that elite okay. eight matchup. New Mexico. All right, I like it. All right, Mr. Nasty, what do you got? Give us some juice on the earlier rounds. I can tell you that I'm aligned with some of what our infamous Bajan has, has spoken. Also a fan of New Mexico. I, I do see them in the Sweet 16. I'd say I've got, I've actually got three that are 10 plus seedings that are making the sweet 16. One, New Mexico. Number two, James Madison. I see see them taking down the Badgers and then a huge upset and knocking the Blue Devils out of this tournament. And then, yeah, I'm I'm a McNeese State guy. Like I just, they can play against anybody they have played well all season. 30 and three, I think they take down the Zag Bulldogs there. And I think that they actually upset Kansas in the, and make it to the sweet 16. So I think that's a pretty exciting, but pretty well documented here. I do feel like the UConn makes it to the final four. Arizona, the Wildcats, bear down. Pull the upset over the Tar Heels and make it to the final four. I'm going to go with Houston. I just love their game. I think it's the year of the Cougs. They're some of my favorite basketball teams and people in in general. And then throw in the Boilermakers because I you just got it. So I yeah Houston, Purdue, Arizona, and UConn as the final four. Okay, and that's what I got. I, I feel good about All it. Right. But yeah, probably gonna have to eat crow next week. So you have three number one seeds in the final four. I do. Uh, that hurts me. 
but it just feels and a, like and a two seat. So you got two three ones, and a, three two. ones and a two. And Bajan, you have two, two ones, ones, a two, and a seven. Okay, I like I, that. Spring, I have Florida lose round, by the way. Yeah, Florida loses first Who? round, too. Yeah, Florida loses first oh, round. Oh, Bird, so. Bird, give us one game. I want to watch a game Boise, on, on Boise Monday. State, Colorado. <laughs> Boise State, Colorado. It don't matter. You can't lose a game bye to bye. a slash team. You don't even know who they play. Colorado. <laughs> They're going to play Colorado and they lose. <laughs> and bye <laughs> bye, Danny. Is Dion, Dion going to be in the sidelines? Colorado. John C. Colorado is back. Colorado is actually really not that bad, but it, I agree with Burn. I, I think it, it, I agree with both of you on, from that standpoint is that we don't know who the heck they're going to play. The, those slash games are the, the hardest because it's like yeah. whoever they play, just pick whoever you think is going to win. There's no matchups yet. In, for the Florida game, I do. I initially was leaning Florida, and then I was like, I don't really. You guys did pour it on in the SEC tournament. I like that. But if it's Colorado, I say Colorado is going to win that game. It, it, it if it's whoever who's Colorado Boise playing State. Boise State if it's Boise, Boise State, State I think Florida State or Florida wins that game not Florida State <laughs> yes Florida State uh, de- declined an invitation to the United so yeah we we're Where's too that? good for it this year a couple of notes I, I know that you had mentioned Stetson we got to give our tip our caps to that can they keep the first half close do you think no I I don't think so I look I am praying that it's like a 10 point or less at half, but UConn's got some firepower. I just, and, and Stetson is, it's Stetson. I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I hope Donnie yeah. Jones. Oh, Jalen Blackman. That's right. Yeah. He's got that 22 point guy, 22 points a game. Blackman. And their second leading scorer is Stefan Swenson at 14 a game. But yeah. this, you, UConn is a force to be reckoned with, man. Out of all the one seeds, if, if they were playing any other one seed, I would say maybe they would have a, a shot in the dark. But it's like they got the 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 best one out of them all. There's going to be upsets in the first round. We're not going to bother our, our consumers with all the, the juicy ones. I picked a lot of them. Whether or not they hit, who knows? I, I do College of Charleston to be Alabama in the first round, by the way. Wow. Uh, so yeah. that... That is a pick that might not be popular, but it's going to be. So pay attention to that one. Step down. I agree with you with James Madison making it to the round of 16, by the way, Burn, I Dukes. think they're going to beat Duke. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. The Dukes beat uh, Duke. Yeah, oh. the Dukes and the Duke. Let's see here. Okay. Bryce Shrews, the coach of Grand Canyon. So you always got to be on the lookout I do. for that. I, I've got Grand Canyon winning the first round. Yeah, Jamie Dixon at TCU. See, the thing with college basketball is that the head coaches matter. Yeah, so, no, great point. Uh, great point. Uh, uh, a lot of these teams, you you might not have watched a lot of college basketball this season, and I don't blame you. But when it comes down to the tournament, it does get pretty exciting. And the reality is that if you have one of those staple coaches, then it makes the world of a difference in the tournament. I don't have Michigan State really doing much, but it, that would be a case in point, right? Like a, a Tom Izzo, for example. Like nobody's giving them a chance, but can you really count the Spartans out? And count Spartan Izzo. That's who my better half picked to win the whole thing. And you know what? I, to your point, I couldn't be mad. I couldn't be mad at it because you never know what could happen with Izzo. Yeah. 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 Um, likely? Not likely, but possible. College of Charleston is hot, so I just keep an eye out on that if you want to get a little bit crazy with your picks. New Mexico, I like them. Riley Minix from Moorhead State, by the way. Keep an mm. eye out on that guy. With a name like um, Riley, it's got to be good. I, I was going to say, you probably like him, Bajan. We were talking about, I was trying to ask you guys, I was going fishing last week, and, and I was asking you if there's going to be any huge upsets in the tournament, in the actual conference tournaments. And there was several <laughs> including the ACC, NC State, who nobody would have thought NC State was going to win the whole freaking ACC. That was crazy. Back. But okay, so anyways, I digress here. In the Sweet 16, my my bigger picks, I have Akron in there, but they're, that's about as far they're going to get. James Madison, Charleston, and I do Duquesne as well, by the way. They have their leading scorer's name is Day. So I don't know if you can... Double Day. Top that. Top four. I saw what you did there with Iowa State, by the way, Vijan. I like Iowa State a lot. I think that they can make it to the uh, round of eight, but the problem is they run into UConn, and I don't think they're going to be able to beat them. 
And he'd say they beat Houston twice this year. Iowa State did twice. Yeah. If I, I was actually match up, that UConn is a different, but that I think if any team can, they could as tough. Yeah. Though so, UConn is tough. You're right. So I I, I was kind of I was trying to find a way to get Iowa State further. If they would have been in the bottom part of that bracket, I would have had them going to the Final Four, no problem. But I I think that their run is going to end. If it ends, so my 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 Final Four, UConn versus North Carolina in the top bracket. Now that's two number one seeds, but I hope that we get this matchup because I think that would be the sexiest matchup of the tournament. Yeah. I, I that's what I I want to see UConn North Carolina. I got I want to see those two giants go at it, and then in the bottom half. I don't really know. It, it, I think it's a toss up. Purdue, I, they could. I don't know. They, they seem to always choke every year. I have Kentucky making it there and Tennessee making it there. So that's two SEC teams. I got Kentucky beating Houston, Tennessee beating Purdue. It's gonna. It's gonna be interesting because that's one of these bigger seeds is gonna get knocked out early. For sure. Like, Most of the ones you just said are going to get knocked out. So your bracket's already done. Yeah. What? I think Purdue, has, Purdue has gotten it out of their system, right? So infamous track record. The last three years, they've lost to 13, 15, and a 16th seed in three consecutive years. I know. I think they'll be ready this year. I think this is their year to, to live up to their potential with Edie. And they're shooting 40% from three, fourth in the country. They get contributions all up and down that starting five. They go eight deep on that rotation. This is a veteran team. I think they have gone through the wilderness, and I think they're ready. Who who do you have um, in the title game, and who do you have winning it? So we can get that on record. We can get it on the. We can get it on film here. We can get it recorded. We can get it documented. Bajan. It is Cyclones and Boilermakers. I've got Purdue to cut down the nets. Zach Eady won't have to reach up very high. In fact, there doesn't need a ladder at all. Just yeah. down those nets. It'll be boiler Purdue. Wow. Purdue finally gets it done. Matt Painter, more relieved than jubilant. Give me the Purdue Boilermakers. Big A, that one's for you. <laughs> Mr. Nasi, who you got? I've got a little bit of an underdog here. The Yukon Huskies. Going up against... <laughs> Going against another underdog in the Houston Cougars, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and let the Cougars cut down those nets. I think that'll be a nice. I, I, it's gonna be a great game. That's the matchup I want to see, and I just I I see Houston just finding a way like they've done, and they they've been a really just steady, consistent team over the last four or five years. So I'm uh, I love what they're doing. This is their year. Give me the Cougs, champions. Let's go. All right, so we got one pick for Purdue. We got one pick for the Houston Cougs. I think that I'm going to go with, I agree with you that UConn's going to make it to the uh, championship round, but I have them playing Tennessee. Now, here's the thing. So Tennessee, they won the SEC regular season, correct? That's correct. What, Ren, SEC, yes. Was SEC considered maybe one of the top conferences in college basketball this year? Easily top three, easily probably a vote okay. for two at the worst. And then on top of it, so they've checked two boxes there. Then their coach, Rick Barnes, I like a lot. Okay. Now here's the thing with Rick Barnes. He's one of those OGs, right? He's so he's 69 years old. He's crossed the 800 win precipice. And I just think that when it comes to situations like this, you get, you, it's one of those stories, right? It's, he's just missing that, that final mm. cap, right? Like it, so yeah. I, I got him going to the championship, and then I'm like, okay, can Connect take them all the way to Woo! the promised land? But I don't think so. I think UConn is actually <laughs> going to repeat. It's so hard. Which is, to which is very hard to do. Whether or not they do it, I do not know. We'll reconvene in, in next week's hmm. show. They might even be out of the tournament. The Hatters. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that's the beauty of this thing. It, it, hopefully, we'll see. Next week, we'll see how many of our Final Four teams are still intact. It, real quick, a quick heavy hitter here. In NFL news, those two things that kind of happened that caught my eye. A big chess piece was moved in the quarterback world. Justin Fields gets moved to Pittsburgh, which that kind of caught everybody by surprise. What were your thoughts on that, Mr. Nasty? And do you think he has any chance at QB1 over there? Uh, yeah, I, I think that was a... 
I don't know. I To me, if I'm the Bears, that's a trade that I'm not making. I, I don't think getting a six-round pick is is worth it. I think they could have held on to him, wait a little bit, wait till training camp, and, you know, see what happens on the, you know, QB carousel or injuries and things of that nature and could have got more. I, I just, and and if I'm another team like that, I, I, I and it's, it was bizarre across the board, to be honest. Like if I'm the Eagles, like I got King Pickett, why not just get Fields? You have somebody that's more comparable to your current quarterback. You give up less draft capital. If I'm the Steelers, it's a win. They've got Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, two former number one quarterbacks last season, and they're paying under $5 million for both combined. So that's a hell of a QB room. I think that Justin Fields has an opportunity. I think that's probably how Tomlin's probably going to paint the picture. But I just, I feel like it's Russell's, it's Russell's show. They're already talking about extending him. It's not going to happen with Justin because fifth year option is going to cost 25 plus million. But if I'm the Steelers, hell yeah, this is a great pickup. I think this is a really solid quarterback room. They, I think if they can win 10 games with what they had last year with Russell and, 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 and Fields in hand, yeah, that, that, that could be a scary team. And they, they've done some things on defense as well, too, with Patrick Queen. Yeah, I, I, Chicago, I, they did a lot of great things this offseason. That right there has got to be the, the worst. The only thing that they actually was like, wow, like a bonehead. Uh, to get rid of a former number 13, yeah, 13 overall, whatever he was, and he's got the talent. I just think he'd be put in the right position and with the right players. And they did. Yeah, they picked up. Uh, they, they've got receiver help with Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, tight end help. They've got pieces now. I don't know. Put a lot of faith in Caleb Williams, who's never played it down in the NFL. I don't know. Good for Justin. Hopefully getting a fresh start is going to help. But I don't know. I just feel like it was a pretty sad day to be a Bears fan. Yeah, but John, I'll quest, I'll I'll uh, form the question a little bit differently for you. I agree with all that stuff that you said, by the way, Mr. Nasty. But John, so all that being said right there, do you think that Justin Fields, how do you think that, what do you think is going through his head at this point in time? Or do you think that he's upset that he got traded to Pittsburgh? And do you think that he has a chance to be QB1 over there? Yes. And yes. Justin Fields is a competitor. Say what you want. I think that he'll use this as fire to burn many good points. This is a win for the Steelers. It would not surprise me as Justin Fields is starting in the latter half of the season for this team. This is a talented quarterback that needs some protection, needs some investment. Mike Tomlin, phenomenal coach. They've got some good pieces there in Pittsburgh. This is a win for Justin Fields. This is a win for Russell Wilson. And one of those guys is going to great opportunity to play for a great franchise. The Bears are who we thought they were. Complete Nimrod move. Why not wait till you're closer to the draft? Hold your cards. Why do you Get show your hands? You're on the turn in a Texas Hold'em game. The river's not even here. You might as well flip over your cards. Just hold your cards for a six-round pick. Yeah. Uh, maybe a fourth round. Let's get excited, Chicago. Complete lunacy. Hold your cards. Now you're going to Caleb Williams, which at best is going to be a maybe slightly increased version of Justin Fields. Same pocket mobility, stronger arm, a little bit more accurate. He doesn't excite me. Now you've shown the world what you're going to pick. You could have held on Justin Fields. You could have had leverage. You could have traded the pick, or you could have taken Caleb and then yeah. had him as your backup, whatever that takes. Bonehead move by the Bears. That's why the Bears, great move by the class of the NFL as they continue to be the Steelers. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I'm actually curious. I think that obviously the deal gets done because some sort of information was swirling around there, right? Like they they obviously knew what the market was for Justin Fields to make this trade, you would assume, right? Don't oh. you think they already had discussions with several GMs to to test the waters on what they could get out there? At worst case scenario, just hold on to them. And then just don't pick up the option. What does a six-round pick do for you? How many Brock Purdy's are there? One? Come on. It's a six-round pick. I'm just surprised because there's a lot of teams out there that could have given up the same draft capital or, hell, increased to a fifth with a potential yeah. for a third. Jets? Aaron Rodgers not going to be quarterback forever. Like, why not bring in Fields as your future? Yeah. You know, number one, the Seahawks. You, just, you can think about quite a few teams that... Lions. Perfect. Why not? Great. I think they're sold on hidden hooker and giving him a shot. But yeah, I, I wouldn't have been upset 
if we brought him in as a future. That's in the division. Know, but, it's, but I don't think the Bears would have traded to us. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the Vikings, same concept. How do yeah. you not, even if you have to pay a little extra because you're in our division, but. The I, Raiders? Yeah. There, there's plenty of teams for him. To I just, for, for a six-round pick, chance. Javi, for a six-round pick, potential for a fourth. I, yeah. Like, to me, it was in, like, I, I don't know how that's all they could get was, was that from the Steelers. It's something like great got to be some sort of information out there like this sounds yeah. it seems like the most bonehead move of all time like don't think anything um, it's like justin saying hey look i'm only going to go to these teams i, I don't know like you're trying to do right by the do right by be, justin like they said might does be he have hard. a no trade no I doubt but it. I, they're just saying that hey look we screwed you over we're gonna do we're gonna do what's right for you tell us where you have any preferred locations i don't know it just to me I'm with you. It's crazy to think that's there's something going on because I, all you can get is a sick from the Steelers is crazy to me. Yeah. Um, and then so last weekend was a, a pretty was a pretty massive weekend in the world of golf. So the last two weeks, I've just been I've just been glued to the TV with the API and mm. TPC, man. Like I, Ooh, I it, it's golf. Been, it's been pretty. It's been pretty awesome actually because it's they both tournaments had their own their own things going on tpc i thought was very exciting very intriguing great finish hell I, I, I would like to point out that burn nasty's picks were way off <laughs> last week mine were probably the worst defend yourself <laughs> my i look i went outside the box i didn't take i didn't take locks for top 10 i went ahead and i think i did preface it with if these guys put four rounds together they're going to be there unfortunately Zalator's could only muster up two rounds. Not even. That's all he could play because he wasn't allowed to play the last two. And make the cut. <laughs> he wasn't even allowed on the dang course. Okay. And Fowler, well, he made the weekend. And that's all I can say. Yeah. But, but no. Horrible picks. Hopefully, none of our listeners decide to, to really throw a lot of coin at, at my picks on, on a top 10 finish. Next, Ken Weeper. I'm, I'll do a lot better on the Masters, guys. I promise. So Bajan had Justin Thomas or an MW Lee, right? Yeah, uh, just equally as bad, if not worse, than Burn. Justin Thomas took the weekend <laughs> off. It was actually with Zal Torres in the, in the gallery, yeah. <laughs> enjoying some beverages. MW Lee, are you there? I do think um, he had a birdie in his final round. One, one birdie. MW? So look for MW. Well, what a finish. What a terrific final round. Scotty shoots it under... At one point, there's four guys either tied or within a stroke of the lead. You got the Island Green coming up. You've got the really exciting, which I think is a great hold, the 16. That long par five leading up to it. And 18 is is no piece of cake either. Oh, Wyndham hits a gorgeous three iron off the tee. So confident. Hits his approach shot so good that he's walking after it. Got a 15-footer. No one's hit this putt all day. Everyone's missed it to the left. He absolutely hits a perfect putt. Yeah. I'm out of my seat. Oh, horseshoes and hand grenades. Oh, horseshoes and hand grenades. It comes out. Did you feel for the so guy? Close. Scotty was another one. Just a tremendous finish. And not to mention Brian Harmon had yeah. almost the same putt. Ten minutes earlier, he slid way left. Not way left, four inches, but it didn't rim out. Just a tremendous finish. Great golf at the players. It really was. I, I need to apologize to anybody that is a big golf fan and listened to one of our shows a couple of weeks ago because when we were previewing the 2024 season, I had pronounced Aberg's name as Aberg, and it's incorrect. It's actually over. It so and he uh, had a great, he had a great tournament. tournament. Top ten. Yeah. He's been in contention. He's going to be a a guy to be looking out for throughout the rest of the season, I think. Speaking of Ricky Fowler, I don't know if you saw the reports, but he was, I guess he was yelling at the fans after the last round. They were, they they were being just a little insensitive and I I can appreciate that. Ricky just wanted to make sure that he put them in their place. Ricky, Ricky got a little emotional. He got a little emotional, a little carried away on that and took it out on some fans. Apologize to the Sawgrass patrons. I, I think that this is actually really funny if you a little funny story here. So there's round one of the TPC. Okay. Last week's episode, I'm sitting here dogging on Rory McElroy. And of course, the first thing that he does is he comes out of the gates 
like an assassin Fire. just Fire. throwing darts the guy looked like the world number one golfer and our very own mr nasty very bold statement says hey rory's gonna win this tournament now guys he just went out on the ledge he said it while rory had a seven shot lead in the first round he jumped on the bandwagon right and then can anybody explain to us where rory ended up on the final day because mm -hmm. i i don't remember seeing him with like was he even I mean, playing you, you saw him he finished the round just not anywhere close to the leaderboard look when did he finish his round at 10 a.m yeah yeah he wanted to finish before lunch he had a he had to get going he could catch his flight just was warmed up yeah he was meeting Zalatoris and jt for late lunch <laughs> and speed and speed too and by the speed, way he yeah. was my so second pick so you gotta throw that one out there that's all good um, you know I just didn't like you dogging on Rory. Okay. That's really just what, what that boiled down to is that you really, you just got underneath my skin telling me that Rory is pretty much a, a has been and he doesn't, he's just not who he is. And not, he's still one of the greatest golfers to play. So when he's, he's kind of like, wow, he's like LeBron special. James, he, he's just overrated to me. He goes in the LeBron James category. Is LeBron James good at basketball? Yes, he is. Is he the greatest of all time? Not even close. And I think that some people talk about Rory in that same ilk. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Look, I hated Rory because I, I'm a Tiger guy. I'm not good with the pointing here. I'm not doing well here. And I, and everybody, as soon as Rory came out on the scene, it was like, oh, he's going to be the next Tiger. And I'm like, that's no, no, he's going to be, a, but he ended up being a great golfer. He's a good dude. He's up there, but he's not in that conversation of go and neither no. is Scotty Scheffler. Scotty's not there yet either. Scotty, 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 is, is, Scotty yeah. is the greatest right now. He is I love Scotty. But he, I love him to death. But you can't put him, you can't have a conversation about greatest oh. of all time when he, he, he has less than five majors. True. Can't do it. Yeah, uh, no, I, of course. He can't be in the GOAT conversation, but he's definitely, as it stands right now, even if you count the live golfers, Scotty Scheffler's the best golfer out of that's playing golf right, right this second. Yeah, it's not that close. Is, I would not argue a, that. We're talking about true legacy. Statement. I would not. Scotty Shuffler is in the field. He's an easy top 10, guaranteed top 20 every week. If you're looking for more golf this weekend, Val Spar is in the snake pit. Take Sun JM, Iron Byron, Sun JM, top 10. Spring, build a base with top 10, sprinkle that top five, Sun JM. Is my boy at the Gala playing this weekend? He plays every week, I believe. Yeah, I, know, I, I, I meant. To... I met him at the API and his girlfriend, and I realized that it was his girlfriend now. So her name is Juju. Oh, a, Juju on that beat. She's a TikTok sensation. Sounds about um, TikTok yeah, sensation, Vern. That's what we're here for. One of us has I think be. Sahith, got to Sahith be. should be in every PGA tournament. That's I'm for pretty sure, sure he is. Um, I think that a couple of last notes here. Brian Harmon is really good. Yes. Um, the goal is taking a week off. The gala is off this week. Wow. Is it the only week he's taking off this year? Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> the, but the thing that I noticed about Harmon, because I haven't really watched him play that much, is the, what, what was driving me nuts is the freaking. The slowest golfer. He, he takes 10 wiggles before he shoots. And I'm like, oh, my God, bro, just hit the shot. And then he hits a, a laser, a dart yeah. five feet from the pin. So you're like, oh, I guess just keep doing what you're doing. But. When you play, how often do you, how many practice swings do you take? Do you, what do you think your average is on that? Like one, if anything, one. Yeah, I think I take two practice and the third swing it. Um, you don't have a routine? But like, but yeah, but, I, but a routine of 10 to 12 wiggles and oh. look back. I couldn't play with that guy. Now it no. drives me nuts. You can't get any rhythm. But it's no. It works for him. It how works about Wyndham Clark having his caddy? come up with a wedge before every putt and get dangerously close yes that ball. is true dangerously like twice, close twice that on eight weird. Yeah, yeah that's weird um, imagine drinking got... with brian Harmon would it be able to go to the bar it's just <laughs> never really gets there like having yeah, him do like a imagine him doing like a cheers and be like, oh no oh no, hold on still was it nope. just uh, quite right nope. ready oh nope still going <laughs> no point oh sorry <laughs> they must drive his playing partners crazy yeah. And then the last thing was Scotty's neck, right? So that was the big story <laughs> on days two and three. He was he ended up just battling through the second round. It looked like it was going to be Xander or Clark. I liked Xander, at yeah. that point. Yeah, 
Um, there was some intimate scenes of him and a masseuse by the scoreboard. Really, God bless that guy getting out there in the middle of a round and yeah. really getting some work in. Just getting into it. I, I think you have to, you have, I, I know he's not the GOAT, obviously. He's only 27 years old, but I think you have to take into consideration what he just finished doing. He just won the, the, the TPC Sawgrass back to back. Nobody's ever done first that, time. number one. Yep, first time. And then on top of it, to put the cherry on top, it was after winning the API the week before. The guy is like, when he's dialed in, he's untouchable. Gonna, he's, yeah. and he could be five shots back on the final round, and you better be watching your back. I think that Wyndham Clark and Xander were playing a little bit too timid in that final round, and it well, came Xander, back to haunt them. Xander's got to make that put on 17. That's, yeah. yeah. You have to. You to put it in that tight, that close, with 18 coming up, like that just... You got him, I think, I don't know what it was, eight feet, maybe, maybe he less. Choked. Yeah. He choked. And so that, that cost him. He could have, he could have just rolled up to 18 and be like, all right, I'm good. Could have done a th an iron off the tee rather than go for this little three wood that went into the pine needles. So you play a lot different if you can just make a damn putt. Come on, Xander. Great. Same thing for Wyndham Clark. Makes a great up on, I think, 14 to get himself a five foot. And misses that putt. And then what I thought it was the way he putts, that was a terrific up on that. He drove the par three over, made a great chip, and just didn't play the break. But great effort to give Scotty a lot of credit, a lot of credit. Get ready for the snake putt this weekend. Yeah. And, and I, you got to give credit to Clark. He didn't make a lot of mistakes that tournament, by the way. Like he was. Yeah, so at the end of the day, all finished 19 under. You had yourself a good week because you're at yeah. 19 under. There just was one guy that was at 20. Yeah, nineteen under. Nineteen under typically gets you the win at TPC. And that, it that's does. not yeah. nineteen under at like the John Deere Classic, or this is nineteen under TPC. Yeah, incredible. It seemed to be playing a little bit differently. That it was almost like those par fives were automatically either eagle opportunities or like guaranteed birdies for those guys. But you still got to drive the ball in the right places. There, what I love about yeah. that course is it's risk reward. We saw some large numbers. You can't take those for granted. And if you lay up, you got to get a tight shot with a wedge into a green. It's a lot of interesting stuff, but they really did make easy work out of that 16th year. I didn't say, I didn't think that the weather really was a huge factor this week. And, and, and yeah, the wind, the wind is always where it takes over. So it just, it, it was a little, a little tame. So they were, and they obviously point. showed it. I wonder how many strokes it would take for us to stick the green on the 17th. Oh, glory. I'd run out of balls. Do you think you can yeah, do it? What is it? One, one thirty. One forty. Yeah, I would say it would take me twelve shots. Really? I think we should do that. I think I could beat twelve. Let's head out. Let's do sports caviar. I could. Beat I mean, I, I, I hit a left. I do feel like I could beat it, but I feel like twelve. You give me twelve shots, I damn well better. Oh wow! Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. that. That's the thing. Is it's not even really that far. One forty is do very. It's just doable. a. It's just an yeah. intimidating shot. And if you guys are watching me, that's even worse. So, <laughs> if we're doing a lot of waggle boarding, Vern would have a yeah. Vern is lefty too. So, a lot of Brian Harmon look, baby. It's the waggle. Yeah. There. I will tell I, you I, that Sunday pin location would suit well with my last thing. Those two shots that Shafle and yes. Wyndham hit into the 17th were the two best back to back shots I've ever seen in that whole back to back in the tournament. To put it yeah, where they, they put it. Well, they had the advantage of knowing they had to do that, though. See, yeah, yeah, I get. Oh, especially because uh, didn't Clark ended up in the water the night, the day before. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, that's going through his head right there. Great tournament. I, I was, I, my wife wasn't. I don't. She probably wasn't the happiest because I was just watching TPC for about sixteen hours between that's Saturday. <laughs> But it was, it was only because my boy Scotty was in tension, baby, in contention, baby. Not in tension. He was in contention. He was intentionally he was... in contention. <laughs> okay, so let's move over to baseball here because to Bajan's point, we're getting real close to smelling the pine. And uh, what kind of enhancements are they taking these days? Are, are they doing anything to make themselves sure better at the sport? I'm sure they are. Just protein. All that, that, they use that tar. <laughs> all the Dodgers um, pitchers use that tar fake stuff. Easy. Easy. <laughs> the Dodgers. We're, so we're going to talk about National League next week. This week, we're going to just get into the American League. I just want you to give us a little preview of 
what team should we be on the lookout for in the American League this year? I can play AL East against better judgment, and I know it's probably going to hurt your feelings there, Hob, but I'm going the Orioles. I think the Orioles, with their additions, are going to really dominate the AL East. So I feel very good about that. Unfortunately, I cannot pick my Tigers to win the AL Central. Like that's going to be a challenge. I do think they're going to be uh, competitive. I do feel good about that. Yes. I Let's go there at least. You but, were in second uh, place last year. Yeah, and I still feel like we're going to be right there. I think still the Twins are probably going to pull that out and win the AL Central and with the Tigers. I think the Tigers get to 500. I think they can, as long as they stay healthy, their pitching is really coming on. So I feel good. And then we still got some young guys coming up on the hitting. So I'm okay with that. AL West, I'm feeling the Seattle Mariners. I feel like, I feel like they're going to be the team that pulls this out. So those are my, my division winners. Wild cards, man. Yeah, I think you have, unfortunately, you have to put the Yankees up there and, and Texas. You got to put Texas. Uh, yeah, because they are the reigning World Series champs. You get DeGrom back. Hopefully he's healthy. So I still feel like the Rangers and, and Yanks get through there on the wild card side of things. Nice. So you did got I answer, the did I answer all no. your questions? Yeah, yeah I've got the Yanks in the playoffs. That was my only question, really, that I, I, I don't. I, I, no, I don't want to put them in there. I just feel like you're still, you're st you still have to. If Cole was going to be out for longer than the three or four weeks, and I really thought you guys were going to pick up Snell. Like, I figured, oh. I, I, I did see that. I just saw that. Awesome. But it was like, it just lined up perfectly. It's like, okay, our star's down. Let's go yeah. throw some money at a new star. And $32 million <laughs> really isn't much for, and it's really a one-year deal. They can opt out. He can opt out afterwards. I thought that would be the perfect match, uh, marriage. But, uh, but yeah, no, either way, I still think the Yankees find a way to, to get that wild card spot. And, and who uh, is your other yeah. wild card pick? The Rangers. Okay, and the, you have the Astros out of the playoffs? Yes. Okay, all right. I've got, look, you got, there's always teams that surprise you. That doesn't break my heart, Burn. Bang those trash they, cans. That I, I like Houston. I just, I, I think that the age is going to get to them and they're going to have some injuries and, and they're out. So, sorry, Astros. Interesting. I only hey. one Texas team. Only one Texas team. Hot and it's going to be the Rangers. But, Sean, what are your thoughts on the American League this 2024 season? Uh, Burns, some good analysis there. AL East is so deep and so tough. Yeah. We could have three, perhaps maybe four teams close to 90 wins or above, which is phenomenal. And they may not all get the playoffs. Very tightly contested. I am aligned with Burn in the fact that an Avis, a bird, is going to win that division. But I'm going to go with the Blue Jays. It's their time. Oh. It's their time, but it is going to be razor thin close. I've got the Blue Jays projected at 92 wins. I love their top three of Gosman, Bassett Hound, and Barrios with a combined war of 7.4. Really strong as a starting uh, top three of that rotation. Their bullpen is improved with uh, Romano, Garcia, and Trevor Richards. 3.5 war right there. I love what they did with Kiermaier and the outfield to enhance that defense. Let Springer play right field or left when he's healthy. Justin Turner, nice addition. Give me the Blue Jays at 92 wins. A bird will follow them. Just one, one win behind the pecking order with the Orioles, the young Orioles who I love. Jackson Holiday, Cedric Mullins, Adley Rushman, Gunnar Henderson. They added Corbin Burns and they've got a pretty good top-heavy bullpen. Orioles at 91 wins. Yankees, they're going to, don't worry, Han. The Yankees are going to get in. <laughs> Five or six with 90 wins, but with Garrett Cole coming down, they're going to lose. That projects, I had them at probably 94 wins. He's worth four yeah. wins a year. That takes him down to 90. I'm, you're starting. Cortez Nestor <laughs> is your opening day starter. His ERA was, was three hundredths of a point less than five last year. And his whip was one point. Nestor Cortez is who you're rolling off in Houston. Good luck. Houston, we have a problem. Yankees have a problem. I do love Alex Verdugo. It's a great pickup for you, not to mention Juan Soto, who's going to be phenomenal with that short porch. And here's what I really love that you did. Two Dodgers in the bullpen, Caleb and Victor Gonzalez, two strong lefted arms are going to be great for you in that bullpen. But just short, but you make the, you make the dance. AL Central, I'll get a little shorter here. Give me the Twinkies. It's going to continue to dominate. 
they are that, that rotation, Carlos Santana at first getting on base at a ridiculous rate. Royce Lewis is a dark horse for a top 10 MVP vote if he stays healthy. And let me tell you about what Matt Walner in that outfield. 111 average exit velocity. That's good for a top four in all of Major League Baseball. He destroys the baseball. Plus, they pitch really well in their bullpen. His lights out. Give me the Twins. And then in the AL West, Astros, unfortunately, are the class of that division. Vern, I, wanted, I want you to be right, but I just can't go against Alex Bregman, <laughs> Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez, Josh Hader added to that bullpen with Alex Presley and Brian Abreu. They're going to win 95 games at least. But... I love what they're doing out there in Seattle. They will be the five or six wild card team there. Cal Raleigh over the last two years, who's hit more homers than any catcher by 11? It's Cal Raleigh. 57 combined homers, 11 more than any other backstop. Florida State. There you go. Strikes out a ton, but we love the long ball. And I like what they've done with Polanco and Crawford at the middle. Special recognition to the A's who won't win more than 50 games, but I will tell you that, <laughs> that Zach Geloff is a Top class gentleman, as is his brother Jake. Had the pleasure to meet with him and play poker with him at a charity tournament. Top of the line, great cream of the crop guys. I wish them well. You need to be wished well if you're going to play your whole season in Oakland. That one's for you, Gallup brothers. That's my top six right there. Okay. I've got three from the AL East. I've got the Twins and then the Mariners and the Astros. Yeah, I think that you're right about it. It's definitely going to be the, it's either going to be the AL East. The AL East is ridiculously deep. But so is the AL West because it really depends on how it depends on how Seattle does because I think Seattle has potential to have a really good season, but will they? I don't know. They got your boy Gilbert out there, right? Logan Gilbert, yeah, maybe. Uh, Logan Gilbert can pitch at Castillo and Kirby. Yeah, Kirby and then J Rod. They got some juice. It's just can they put it all together again? They had a pretty good season last year. I'll start with the AL East as well. I feel pretty good about the Yankees only from the standpoint because we got Juan Soto. <laughs> that should if feel good. Judge, yeah, if Judge and Soto are healthy and dare I say that we can bat Stanton at the seventh oh. slot in the lineup and he can just be in the lineup as a seventh hitter, like I'd be fine with it. I would actually Man. really enjoy that. That's what it's come but, to. Oh. Yeah, but the problem is that he's never healthy. That's the thing with Stanton, no. right? There's reports that, that he's slimmed down and he's lost 15 oh, pounds and all this okay. stuff. How that affects his power. Way. Not even, that doesn't help. Uh, I think it could. He was freaking still, bro. What are you losing? He doesn't have a lot of body fat. What's he losing? He was just too bulky. Slim down. Know, I, mean, I don't know how I ever have that problem. I don't know. Get into like a sword stop. Get, bulky get is, is just something different than what you're familiar with. <laughs> so i got the yanks winning the division this is under the impression that garrett cole is going to be our ace this year this is also with a big under the impression that carlos rodan pitches this season there's so many questions on the mound for the yankees mm -hmm. so it, if everybody's healthy and they perform yeah the yanks can win the division uh but that is, it's just a big if. So we'll see. I do. I, I love the, the Orioles pickup with Burns, but then you cannot, you can't count out the Rays either. I, I just think those three teams. And then as to your point, Bajan, Toronto is all is, they got a lot of young talent and uh, really good pitching as well. You had them winning 93 games. The over under on Toronto, according to Vegas is 87. So I don't know. There's a little bit of a gap there. It seems to me. 92, 92 wins is what I'm quoted as. But yeah, I would take the over on that. They're going to hit the over. Whoa. whoa. Uh, even if they hit 88 or 89, this is a good ball club. <laughs> I hate the AL Central. That, like, you guys hate the <laughs> NFC South. Hate. You guys hate the NFC South. I hate the AL Central. Why? Okay. <laughs> like, th this is a division that i cannot stand it's i don't want to watch the twins play the white Sox or just name any of the teams and i don't want to watch any of those games the royals versus the tigers it's like a classic that's, that's a, a tigers burn they're gonna finish third in this division they're, i love the players they're putting together if their time is coming they're gonna play they're, have a good year decent year a lot of it yeah second second 
Okay. We'll see. It, it can only go up because they only won 56 last year. They got to be better than last year, I guess. They they watched the World Series in the same spot that the Yankees did, sir. No, I understand it, but I'm just talking about the 162 <laughs> games of, of the regular season here. You have to go with the Twins because there's out of the other four teams, there's nobody there that is, I think, made enough moves this offseason to do anything there. They, the division is there for the taking. Like yeah. you could have gotten, you could have signed Who Blake Snell and a couple yeah. hitters and just won the division. It could easily happen for the Tigers. Let's say, for example, they didn't go out and do it. You should uh, be well, very yeah, upset well, about it. I'm not. We're not. We don't have the star talent just yet. So we're still build, building through our our farm system, and we've got some young guys that we are core, and we just got. We're waiting for the right time to spend money on the free agency. We got to get rid of Baez. His contract. Oh, that's oh. Oh. It's about as worse as stands. We got rid of Cabrera's big the big dollar ticket, and all we did was add buy it. So, three more years of that, yeah. and then we'll see. But, but yeah, he's been a bust, man. I, he, he had defensively, so he's, he's, like, he's still elite, but yeah, his spring training right now, his batting average is point oh nine three. Yeah, oh. which oh. is very close oh. to what he batted all of last year, anyways. I mean. <laughs> He was damn close to the Mendoza line. I mean, it just it's it's well done that. Yeah, he was under Mendoza's grave. I would say yeah. Colt Keith, watch out for him. Yeah, he's going to be a young player at second yeah, base. I love it. Dark Horse Rookie of the Year candidate. Colt yeah, with him, you got him. Like for him Green Carpenter. Is he what? Like do you, what would you say? He's like him. a two. He's going to bat like two ninety. You think, Bajon? Colt Keith. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think Cole Keefe's at 270, maybe 265, but he can do a lot of things. He can play defense. So he's got some good pop, rocking some ribbies. That's a good piece to let you. Burns Point, I love Torkelson. Riley Green is out there as well. He's a stud. You probably could put some pieces together. Yep. Who, who do the Tigers Parker play Mills. opening day? We're, we're going. Sports Caviar is going. They're flying us out, remember? Tigers Brass. Hey. <laughs> uh, also, just so you know, the Rangers, you know who the Rangers are trotting out for opening day? Nathan Eovaldi? Eovaldi, yeah. So You know who they're not trotting out? Max Scherzer, Jacob deGrom, or Montgomery. That's why they won't, they'll finish third in the division, because those guys aren't there. Either yeah. Seager's going to start late. This is a team. It was sweet last year. Enjoy it, Ranger fans. You'll be lucky to get more than 85 wins this year. Yeah, they still have my boy Adolis, the Adonis Garcia. Yep. I don't, it, it's, you can never count out Houston, sadly, but true. They just have too many weapons over there. Houston's going to win that division. I would say Seattle gets the second place in that division and they'd be in contention for the wild card. And Texas, maybe. We'll see. It, it depends on what happens with their pitching staff. But nothing too juicy coming out of that division with the Angels and the A's. Hopefully, we see Mike Trout get traded. What's your six, Hav? What's your six? I got the Yankees. I got the O's. I got the Rays. I got the Twinkies. I got the Astros. And then I have the Mariners. I think the Mariners will probably scoop up that last one over Toronto. But I think it's going to be close right there. Yep. There's no way. There's no way the AOEs gets four teams. That would right? be unprecedented, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> unprecedented. No way. Yeah. The Tigers are going to start off 5-0. and Who do they play? And the White Sox or Royals? We got the Athletics oh. for three. Oh, we got oh, the Athletics yeah. for three. And then we got the Pirates for two. Oh, so. delightful. You could be. Very well. 5-0, and before, one. Be, before we be, I know. Before we get into some central play and then play the Twins. You know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. 5-0 is a good start, though. That's some good pieces, Byron. The future is looking up. I, I, I like the open. GM, so I'm, I'm liking what he's doing. What, when is opening day, Bajan? Tomorrow at 6 a.m. Set your alarms. The true opening day is next Thursday. Yeah. And ti Tigers start April 5th, Friday. So. What? Oh, Our, the day. Tigers opening day is Friday. But I think oh, at home? Thursday. It's like the actual, yeah. yeah. Thursday is the actual, I guess, official, minus your, the Dodgers, obviously. The 28th? We are, yes, the 28th is opening day. Okay. The Yankees open with a four-game set against Houston. Dang it. Oh, oh and 4 Yeah, that's what I was saying. You're going to be in Houston. Houston, your Yankees are going to have a problem. And then we go, then we travel to Arizona. 
Uh, good luck. Best of luck. And then we got the Blue Jays. Oops. Yep. You're going to have two wins in the first with no, game. With, with no cold. With no cold. But don't worry. Nestor Cortez will make two starts. Don't worry. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a pitcher that has a, a top velocity of 92. You can get by. Yeah. Wilson Alvarez called. If you were in the 1992, it would be fine. <laughs> I think that the problem, if Cortez can be as good as he was in 2022, we're, I'll take that all day long. It's oh, not, absolutely. It, it, yeah, he got injured, and then now we, don't, now we don't know, right? Next week, we'll pick. We'll do a little preview on the NL. I'm sure we'll be talking a lot about the Bravos and Los Doyers there. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, I was winning the NL East and NL West. Another quick note real quick in the NFL, Aaron Donald, I, I wanted to give him his mm. credit. He did decide to retire. I believe he's only 32. Young. Smart man. Decade of dominance. Absolute decade of dominance following in Barry Sanders' shoes, following in Megatron shoes. This is the thing to do. Get out with your faculties. Win three Defensive Player of the Year awards. Win a win first what, team. One or two, yeah, one or two Super yeah. Bowls. And he'll be a first team, first team Hall yeah. of Famer. 111 sacks. Put the man in the hall and give him all his faculties to enjoy the other 30 or hopefully 50 years of his life. Yeah, he gets to enjoy the next five years. So he's got, he's made enough money. He gets to sit back, relax, and then wait for that, that call to can. Outstanding player. I hate it because the Lions, the Lions could have had him, and instead they felt like a tight end named Eric Ebron was a better choice. Oh, Eric Ebron, so, why? Don't hurt me again. Ebron is not a horrible player, right, by any means. But to pick him his draft position, yeah, well, for that's what I'm saying good. for his draft position, and 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 the fact that Aaron Donald was, I think, selected. I don't know two picks after. Yeah, like, oh, Eric hurts me. Oh, hurts me. Right. Oh. Do you think that it has anything to do with the fact? I, I think that you might be onto something right there, Bajan, with the early retirement. Do, do your 10 years and get out. But I do think that some of this might have to do with the fact that he was playing for the Rams and they weren't going to do anything. Don't you well, think that's something to do with it? I think that yeah, helped. Got a Super Bowl win. He's got his faculty. So he's stuck everything. He's done everything. Why don't you go enjoy your life? Life is, yeah. Was he, was he regressing statistically? It's hard to tell as a defensive tackle because he's getting double teamed on every play. It, it, it has to do with game script. I mean, 111 sacks in 10 seasons is phenomenal. I or maybe exactly. was. I'd have to look at game film, but yeah. this guy is a game wrecker. Uh, I think leave before you start declining. I, I applaud it. Did you? I don't remember hearing much about him last year, though, in general. Like you heard his name, but it wasn't like. Yeah. Man, or you hear Aaron Donald's having a, a insane season in 2023. Well, you know, the Rams like, were not really having an insane season. But I think, just like John said, part of it is the fact that they were also losing some of their studs on the D line, so he was pretty much it. And every team knows Aaron Donald, and they schemed around him. They double teamed him. He created havoc in the fact that he helped his teammates yeah. get open and get loose. But yeah, I, I don't know about D. Clyde. I think he's still. Hell, he signed a 33 or average $33 million contract just a year or two ago. So I, he wasn't, he wasn't falling off the, off the ledge by any means, but yeah, kudos to him for retiring on top and yeah, enjoy yourself and we'll see you in Canton in five years. So if, the, so in 2018, he had 20 sacks. That's incredible. The defensive tackle position that is, that is incredible. Insane. Okay, so just, I'm going to, I'm going to, I looked up his stats here for you guys. Okay, so this is, he's never had, yeah, he was starting to regress the last two years, actually, compared to what he has done in his career. He was basically in double digits, sack-wise, almost his whole entire career. And then, it, including 2018 with 20, which is just insane. <laughs> then he had double digits. And then the last two seasons, he had eight and then five. So I, I, I think that probably actually had something to do with it as well. I, I, I think that he might've thought to himself, I don't have what I used to have. So I'm just going to get out now. To, well, you 2022, know, like, 2022, really played 11 games. Yeah. He was hurt and he only had five sacks. He had eight. He had eight, uh, he had eight this past year. Yeah. And 16 nothing. games. 
That's eight more than I've ever had. It he just had eight, might not he be had eight this third season. season. Yeah, it, I think that when you know that you can sack a quarterback 20 times and then you're down in the single digits, I'm wondering if he... Let's get him on the show next week. We'll ask. Oh, yeah. here's, sure I, is, here's, look, I have plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah. I, let's get him on there because I think he'll disagree with you because he had his, that 20 and a half sack season was like... Actually, an anomaly. Yeah, his, it was. The rest of his seasons, it was anywhere from 8 to 13. So it wasn't like... It wasn't 8 to 13. It was double I'm digits for about seven seasons no, in a row. He had, in 2014, he had 9. Then he had 11. Then he had 8. And then he had 11. Then he had 20 and a half. Then he had 12 and a half. 13 and a half. 12 and a half. 5, 8. So that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying, like, he was between 8 and 13 every season except one. So let's... yeah. He wasn't falling off. Aaron Donald I, is a beast. Hey, I'm and just I, throwing it. I, I, I'd like to see him go to well, Oklahoma drill with you right now. Mm. No, I could dodge Ooh. him. I'll, I'll, AD, I'll you right hear that? Corner. AD, you hear that? Come AD, on now, he's coming on the show. AD and Hobbs. Let's have. go. You think dodge Aaron Donald? I definitely. AD versus HD. Let's go. No. I could. You couldn't. No, uh, I'm 40 years old now. He's 32. I think just from that sheer standpoint, it, yeah, I wouldn't have a chance. Get some advantages. Yeah, he's <laughs> six four. I'm five four. I think I got him. I'll go right between his legs if I have to. That's he's right. used Ernest to Ernest guys like you. Right. Or... Yeah, you guys see me in the post. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I don't, don't think that's not a guy. I wouldn't be able <laughs> to tackle Burn. I don't think. No, but John, you're coming in town in two weeks. That is correct. All Let's right. set up a caviar night of caviar. Let's Can we it. do a caviar day where we uh, play some golf? Yes, I think that certainly can occur. Okay. Have you happen. ever played with Burr? No, but I long to. I've been, I dream about it. I do. I've seen videos. It's, it's, it's just like Brian the, Harm. Just like Brian yeah, Harm. I'm probably closer to Ricky Fowler. It has to be another lefty or lefty. Mike Weir. Oh, one of my favorites, Mike Weir. He had a great supernova career. Nice well, That's right. Good. Thank you, Canada. Yeah, so we'll we'll try to figure out a fourth here. We'll get Jacob Posse, and then we'll yes. get some live footage. We'll get some live footage of, of the Sports Caviar crew actually golfing and see who's the best out of us three. Mm, that day. <laughs> <You're the> whole... <laughs> gotcha. It's very important to preface. All right. Hope you guys enjoy the first weekend of March Madness. If your team's in it, hopefully your team can survive in advance. I I remember the days where my team was playing, and I enjoyed those days, those fond memories of the Florida State basketball team making it to the tournament. Hey, well, <laughs> we get a new coach, maybe we'll be back. One day we'll get back there. Yeah. Until next week, caviar connoisseurs. We'll talk to you later. Enjoy the madness.